Hey everybody, Coach Toolshed here, and today's video is not going to be discussing Tim Sweeney and his latest desperate attempts to make himself look like the hero and savior of the gaming industry. No, that is not the purpose of today's video. Today we're going to be discussing the rising tide and problem with influencer culture, especially here on YouTube, because that is where it seems to be the most prevalent. It also branches out to different social media paths, but this seems to be the main issue that we see is here on YouTube when it comes to influencer culture. Of course, you have outlets like Twitch and streamers, and we're going to be discussing all of that here today. I want to discuss specifically the people who get involved with the corporate types, the people who get involved with these AAA publishers, and even some smaller channels that might get involved with even down to indie developers, because it's all the same game that they're playing, and that's what I want to discuss here today. Because although it has taken quite a while for us to get here, even the slow-moving, slow-to-realize AAA publishers have finally started to get wind of the fact that us gamers are on to their nonsense, for the most part. There's still some people who might be naive to the practices, but at this point, pretty much everyone who gets involved with either console or PC gaming has gotten burned by at least a handful of releases over the years. Now, maybe you've been lucky enough and you've dodged that bullet and you haven't had any problems with any of your purchases that you had, but I think the overwhelming majority of us can point to probably many games that we picked up that we felt betrayed after we picked up the product. It was not close to what we were advertised to. It did not live up to its expectations. The developers or the publishers broke promises that they told us either with monetization or gameplay or technical performance, it doesn't really matter. There's so many examples, there's, it's too numerous to list, and I'm sure everyone has their own games in their head that they're picturing in their mind be, and say to themselves, yes, I felt burned by this game or that game. And so the industry is on to it now. They understand that they don't have the trust that they thought they did even a few years ago. Like I said, it's taken them a while to get there, but it's pretty obvious from the fact that this year at E3, since we saw almost no gameplay, maybe the least amount of actual gameplay that we've ever seen, at least in recent memory, it's because the industry is finally concerned and scared about the reputation that they have amongst consumers because it's finally starting to affect their bottom line. For years, they just ran roughshod over the entire gaming industry, players is what I'm talking about, and... Now they know that they can't fully get away with that at all times. They're still trying, desperately trying. They're trying to convince government bodies of all this. But what they've decided to do now is they've turned their focus, instead of directly advertising to us in the traditional way, what they're starting to do is more and more involve influencers. Because what they've decided to do is to buy out different people that we have trust in and have built trust with over the years here on YouTube. People who are our, our favorite personalities, people whose reviews we trust, these are the people more and more that we see getting involved with this influencer corporate programs, whether it be EA Game Changers or any other thing down the line. These companies have titles of employees that they have working for them called influencer managers that are specifically designed to go out and manage the influencers. And in turn, the influencers are designed to manipulate us, the public, the game buying public, the people actually buying the games into paying whatever they want, to buying any product they want, into defending any nonsense business strategy that they want to hoist upon us. Now, the devious thing about this whole plan is by using influencers and flying people out to events and only showing footage to select people, only showing footage at E3, gameplay footage behind closed doors to selected media types, people that they know will be friendly to the products, and they only fly out people that they know will be friendly to the products, they try to do it under the guise of, hey, we just want to create hype. We just want to get everyone excited. We want to spread the word and get everyone excited and hyped for the game. But let's think about this for a second. If they really wanted to get everyone hyped and excited for a game, if they're really proud of the product that they have to show, why wouldn't you release that to everyone to get everyone hyped? Think about it. All they're really trying to do is completely control and manipulate the narrative in their favor. That's why it's only being shown to influencers, only being shown behind closed doors to the corporate media types. That's the only people they want to show. If you're getting invited behind closed doors at E3, I don't care how critical you've been of other games. Odds are the people that are inviting you behind closed doors for that particular game know that you 
will be positive about their game, or at least they're gambling on the fact that you will most likely be extremely positive about the game they're about to show you. If they really wanted to build hype, you could have these meetings and show the people the footage behind closed doors so that way they can make their videos about it and show the footage on their own channels and spread the word that way. But you could also show it to the general public and they could build the hype organically. But they don't want organic hype. It all has to be orchestrated. It all has to be manipulated. That's all they're trying to do. And they, once again, they, they try to cover under the guise of just saying, hey, we want to just get everyone hyped. We're really excited about this game. We, we can't wait to show it to you. If you can't wait to show it to us, then show it to us. Stop telling us that you can't wait to show us the game and then not show us the game. We're just going to show it to these 20 or 30 people behind closed doors where we can control and manipulate the language and let them know what bullet points they have to hit. Let them know what they should be focusing on and talking about. And we're going to discuss these game systems. And we're going to convince the media types. And then these small handful of people are going to go out and influence millions of other people. That's the whole game. Because then the only information we have is coming through this small little filter. You don't have hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of people getting a first impression of the gameplay by just releasing gameplay. No, it all has to be manufactured. It all has to be orchestrated. Back in the day, they used to do it with magazines like Nintendo Power. And they still try to do that, but magazines have largely gone away. You still have stuff like Game Informer. It's still around. And once again, we've discussed on this channel before, that is just a corporate tool of GameStop. It's owned and run by a brick-and-mortar store in front, purposely designed to sell you games, not to give you a real critical lens. It's just there to build hype. And that's that was the old way. And then it moved into E3 presentations and getting everyone hyped with CGI trailers and lying out their asses about what the games were going to provide and how they were going to run and what systems they were going to have. We have... A whole catalog of different liars going up on stage at E3. Everyone knows about that. And now the game industry has finally caught on that we don't care about the CGI trailers and all the glitz and the magic tricks that they try to show up on stage because we're onto their games. The public is not stupid forever. They might be stupid in the moment. You can trick them a few times. But once bitten, twice shy. And if you get bit twice, well, now the jig's up. Because you just killed off that consumer. It's not a consumer for you anymore. They're not going to buy your products. You might get one. You might even get two. Some people, of course, will be diehard fanboys. And you can beat them over the head relentlessly. And they will defend everything you do. We know that. But the general public, you can't do it forever. And we're at the point now, we are at the, the mass point where even the casual gamers are sick of it. Because... Even the casual market can't say stupid forever. Yes, they keep buying these sports games, but more and more people are starting to realize that it is just a farce. They're wasting their money. They're spending way too much money on these games these days. And now you have nonsense, like NBA 2K showing full advertisements of whatever random product during the game for a full price $60 product. It's an all new low. And so they turn to the influencers. And we're going to see this more and more because if someone already has 100,000, 200,000, 500,000, maybe more subscribers on YouTube, well, they got that baked in, cooked in fan base. And these companies know all they have to do is fly someone out. They don't really have to pay anyone. So as one of my subscribers noticed on one of my videos a few weeks back, you'd have to be probably a literal sociopath to go out and meet people and they try to get friendly with you. They'll, they'll bring out the developers that you like. You can go and rub elbows with you know, someone like Pete Hines. Pete Hines was at a party. He talked to me. Randy Pitchford talked to me. And these people get all excited rubbing elbows. Even if they say that they're not jaded, what are they going to do? They're going to turn around and go home and talk about how Pete Hines lied about this or that? No, they're not going to do that. For many different reasons. Like I said, you'd have to be an actual sociopath to get friendly with someone and then go and just bash them coldly the next day. If someone does that, though, probably there is a real reason that they're doing it. But for the most part, at the very least, they're not going to want to lose the access. They're going to want to get invited back. They got noticed by the AAA publisher. They got contacted. And they, they were reached out to and said, hey, yeah, we'll fly you out. We think you're important enough. 
and they'll say, hey, yeah, we like your channel. We like what you're doing because probably you've been mostly positive about their product. That's why you're there in the first place. They don't fly out the channels that are super critical all the time. They never do. It, now, maybe a small indie developer will reach out to someone that's critical if they think they have, they have a good game because they know that if someone who is super critical of most products likes their product, well, then there's probably some credibility there. So you do see that sometimes. But even that, they're trying to play the same game. They're trying to use the trust of the public. And this is what's known in business in general, not just gaming, but in business in general as testimonial propaganda. Because that's exactly what it is. They're using your trust in whatever person, whatever viewer watches your channel that already has built trust with you. You are buying that trust by flying that person out, by giving them review copy, by giving them special access, by giving them unlimited microtransaction budget so they can enjoy the game further. All of this is stuff that happens. And these people, whether whether they want to admit that they've been influenced or not, just, I think it's obvious. If you get taken out and treated like you are special, you are going to feel even a little bit like you are special. That's just human nature. And if you can totally ignore all that, <laughs> That's just, that's, that's an abnormality. Most people can't do it. And I guarantee you, the overwhelming majority of people on YouTube who get flown to the events, who get all this behind-the-scenes access, and this goes for the corporate media type too, the people that have no concept about gaming, they get taken out to these events, wine and dine, here, have a party, we're going to put you up in this five-star hotel, we're going to treat you on the town, we're going to throw this big party for you because you're special, because you are going to promote our product. You've been nice to our product for years. That's why you're here. And the advertising they need to do to, to throw these little shindings is a drop in the bucket from what they would have to do in the past by having full-on media blitz campaigns, spending $100 million on advertising. They don't have to spend nearly that much to win over influencers. And they can largely leave... The corporate media behind they don't need the corporate media for this they get way more influence by going to youtubers and to twitch streamers they'll have far more influence by just contacting just that small focused group of people to promote their product look at what it did for apex legends they they didn't have any marketing for that game except reaching out to streamers to popular streamers saying hey why don't you play our game why don't you play our game Money doesn't always have to change hands. Sometimes I'm sure that it does. Sometimes it doesn't. It's all about just giving people some access sometimes. That's all they need. Just making them feel a little bit special. Giving them review copies. That's really all it is. At the end of the day, if you even just keep a friendly relationship with an influencer, you have them on the hook. Because at the very least, they're not going to want to piss you off enough where you will revoke even something as minimal as a review copy where they could just go buy the game themselves but even just having that review copy on the hook because that way they'll get the coverage first they can get their review out before the game comes out they can be part of the trend setting and the influencing that's the whole point of how this works and it didn't always used to be that way i know it's been creeping in more and more over the years but now it's at the point like i said it's ubiquitous it's for every game, even double-A games, even some indie games do this. And we just have to be aware of what's going on. Because it's just going to keep getting worse. The companies know that their E3 presentations aren't going to sell games anymore. CGI trailers might sell a few copies, but they're going to run low on the list. The only way that they can get the money that they want is to buy your trust. By selling you out, selling me out through these influencers and the biggest problem with all of this is is all this is doing is training up the next generation of gamers to be in a situation where this is the only way that they know they're going to get all their influ information through these influencers and i don't even know if we can stop that at this point social media has clearly taken over people aren't going, aren't reading magazines to get their news anymore that's just not happening people aren't even opening up digital versions of anything they just want to watch videos they just want to watch streams it's the easiest most condensed way to get views that's why youtube is so popular and why there's billions of views on youtube every single day is because it's one of the easiest ways to digest information and that's why this is where all the marketing is going to be going 
this is where all of the effort's going to go into. It's all going to be about stream culture, hype culture on YouTube. And we just have to be aware of who we can trust and who we can't. And I'm not saying, oh, you, oh, you, you can only trust people like me that are independent and small. No, that's not really what I'm saying. But just be wary of where you're getting your information. Because it's ubiquitous throughout all the industry at this point. You are, it's impossible for there to be any big game that doesn't have some sort of trail of breadcrumbs leading you to release day of staged, choreographed hype machine that has clearly been manipulated and only going through the certain filters that they want it to go through. Anyway, that's it for me, Coach Toolshed. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Please subscribe. If you want to stay in tune with the channel, head forward. And as always, keep it turned to 11. And if you'd like to share the video, apparently that's uh, one of the only things YouTube really cares about these days because if you've noticed, there's a lot of smaller channels that have just been getting hammered with terrible view counts these days. And it's not just affecting my channel. I see it all over YouTube right now. Smaller channels just really taking it on the chin. So if you'd be so kind, if you like the video, feel free to share it around. And that's it for me, Coach Toolshed. I'll talk to you later.